Jock, this Atlanta team would not go away. What did it take down the stretch for you guys to pull out the win? Megan, we, we all rebounded somebody tonight. Come on now. <laughs> huh? You going to leave with that? Big offensive rebounds. Let's too. go. Yes. We showed that to the team after. Some big, some big just possession, winning plays. And that's what it boiled down to. Um, you know, it, it's just the opponent that night. And for us, whatever it's going to take to the win, whether different rotations, somebody's in, out, all the above. We're getting to a place where you're just doing your role in order to help us to win. Some big rebounds at the end of the game, some execution that was pretty good. And overall, uh, six and one home stand, so pretty good. I know a stat that you're not going to like is that turnover number. Was there anything defensively that the Atlanta Hawks were doing to kind of disrupt you guys? Your know, teams are going to continue to to trap Kevin. And um, I think before the half, that I took that mistake as far as the play that we ran and where I had guys on the floor. And so I think overall, if we can keep things pretty simple when they do trap Kevin. Uh, we have multiple guys that can get to the middle and be an outlet. And the last time out, we said specifically who we want the ball to go to. So we might have to build from that direction and say specifically, we want the ball to come out of the trap and get to this person, then we'll build from there uh, to alleviate some of the pressure that Kevin has when they do double team him. We don't mind the double team. Uh, when we do get it out and we get it out successfully, good things happen. So uh, we'll continue to embrace it and get better at it. Coach, got two? Uh, oh, go ahead, Christian. Coach, I don't, I don't think my eyes deceive me. Kyrie is not seven foot, but he grabbed 11 rebounds today. Just what did you see from him? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. No, no, uh, no limitation of size. You know, when you want to rebound, is if you want to rebound. And so, uh, it's interesting. You know, you had a couple possessions on the defensive end where Royce had to box out of Congo, and that was a tough task for him. And we asked other guys to come in and rebound. So you see it on both ends. Kai got in the position. I think to get offensive rebounds because he was attacking the rim. When we get to the paint, usually good things happen. Sometimes we do settle for our threes in mid-range. That's part of who we are. Uh, but when we can get to paint, collapse the defense, make them react a little bit, good things do happen. And, and second, just you guys finally finished this homestand 6-1. and one. Just what are some things that maybe you guys learned or discovered during the stand that you can carry over onto the road? Whoever plays can contribute. Uh, tonight, Dayron Sharp comes in and gives us great minutes, uh, and that's what we want this team to be built around. Uh, to be able to be in a position when playoffs come around and your number's called, that you have confidence, your teammates have confidence in, in you, uh, that's what we're building towards. I challenge the group for consistency, uh, whether that is holding the team to 13 points in the third quarter one game, but giving up a 20-point lead in, in another game. And so can we continue to uh, be in a mental space of being a consistent team? That's our challenge. Jacques, I got two for you. Ben got around 21 minutes tonight, came out, scored, I think, first six, six the first ages. What did you make of his, his first game back in a bit? Yeah, you see the shots that we were able to get with just his pace. You know, we, you know, Atlanta have been playing a lot of zone. Uh, half of those possessions, they couldn't even get into zone because Ben is pushing the basketball up. We're getting open threes out of that. You see different guys get different looks when Ben is handling the basketball. Now it's going to be a challenge of he's handling basketball, not handling the basketball. Can we be... You know, efficient both ways with him rolling to the rim, him being in the middle as an outlet. So we still got a, a challenge ahead of us. And then just TJ had the first good game back and then kind of a little lull and, and strong rebound tonight. Just what have you made of his first four games as a whole? It, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, the, you know, uh, I don't really play golf, but like every now and then, like that first time when you get back out in the summertime, you play golf and you just hit and you're just not thinking about it and the ball actually goes straight for me sometimes. That's kind of what that first game was. And then you start to think about, okay, I really am playing and I need to be in this position. I need to have this form and I need to play with this guy. TJ is still filling this thing out. Fourth game, uh, not playing a ton of minutes right now. Being in the first unit, in the second unit, he's kind of filling out the game. And, and I talked to him today about that. Like, it doesn't have to come all today, next week, week after that, January, February. We want him ready for the playoffs and what he can bring to the team. Will he play tomorrow? TJ will not play tomorrow. That's just um, twofold. I mean, with Nick, uh, obviously Atlanta can score and they've got a lot of weapons, but how much of them shooting, whatever, 505 yeah. was you missing him? And Big do you part expect of it. him to be in tomorrow or still? Big part of it. We'll see. Uh, I haven't got a chance to get the performance team and see you know, how tonight looked with all the guys yet. Um, but you see the difference. I think in the first half, way too many drives, way too many drives at the rim, where sometimes Nick will come over and save the day for us. Uh, so it's a great lesson for us to appreciate what he does. Uh, it's a great lesson for him of the, 
you know, what he does for this team and he's appreciated and how important it is to be available every game. Those things are important when you're starting. And so uh, great lessons all around for our group. And in Kevin's case, he came in leading the league in minutes. Obviously, you needed all 36 that he gave you tonight. Do you expect him to be available in, in Indy? I, I will say, Brian, the, the minutes are adding up. And uh, I'm not sure where he sits at as uh, far as uh, I know. Probably he and Royce are probably top five in, or seven or somewhere around right there in minutes. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you. We'll always be smart. I told you short term, long term. Uh, I'll see how they came from this game. But uh, the, the, the minutes are adding up. And uh, if we can get through tomorrow, um, the schedule is in our favor to get a little break. But I'll see how these guys feel after this. And Jock, mentioning tomorrow night in Indiana, you guys were just there, you know, your last road game, actually. Um, what do you see as the biggest challenge, especially coming off of, of, of a back-to-back -back and also building off of what you guys have done here at home? Yeah, hopefully we remember uh, what it was like going into the fourth quarter with that team. The, uh, the emotion, the poise that I talked about at that time uh, that we had and the lack of also. And uh, it's interesting to play the team fourth time before uh, the new year. So uh, we, are, uh, we know who they are. They know who we are. And uh, I'm looking forward to going up there and trying to get a win. Thanks, guys. Well, the official score for tonight's game with a late save to get Lobo a win because <laughs> on the pregame, your key key to the game was rebounding and they did edge them. It was tied. The official score shaded them ahead 39 to 38. I mean, it was vitally important for them to be able to hang on the glass uh, in this game and they did a great job of it. And they mentioned Kyrie Irving with 11 rebounds, but I thought there were a lot of instances where it was just really good team rebounding. You had a couple guys uh, boxing out so somebody else could swoop in and get the board. Uh, there was a play in the first half where there was a nice tap out uh, by one player so that his teammates could get it. And then that huge offensive rebound tap out yeah. by Royce O'Neal on the last offensive possession uh, for Brooklyn. So I thought overall um, it was just a really gritty effort, a gritty effort by these guys to make sure they were able to compete on the glass. Also want to throw some more numbers at you. Ben Simmons, we knew he'd play about 20 minutes. We thought he was going to have more of an impact scoring right from the outset because that's what he was doing. He he ends up with six points, but seven rebounds, seven assists. So he was one of those guys when he was on the court, pretty effective on the they glass. They might have been the first six points, yeah. though. Like he he got he got fired out of a cannon after not playing the last few games. Uh, but you heard Jock Vaughn talk about it. He really sets the tone in terms of pushing the pace, and a lot of it is because he can corral the defensive board, and you don't have to worry about an outlet. He can just push and go the other way. He's so strong in the way he fires the basketball around the court. So the the numbers may not be gaudy, in particular the points, but certainly he was very impactful on those 20 minutes.